this is a lot more people than I expected on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I won't be here. So, yeah, thanks for coming. And uh, I'm Adarsh. I'm from India. And uh, it so uh, sure sounds like a clickbait title, but yeah, ha I'll try to deliver. So, we're going to look at different applications of NLP and how you could develop that to maybe propel your career and to impact your So basically, everyone here would already know what NLP is. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Natural language processing is like, you know, AI part in which you uh, teach the machines to, uh, you know, recognize, uh, you know, give input and output as some, some form of text or speech data. So uh, this is obvious. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Okay, so, you know, a best example would be the most advanced NLP tools that are Google now or Siri. Okay, it takes a lot of research and uh, you know in a lot of languages to develop such tools. So we're gonna look at how you go from nothing to this level. So we'll start. So there's a problem. Okay, this is uh, uh, a data from eight years back. So here you can see that English leads the internet. Okay. And then there's all these languages, then there's the rest, okay? But I think everybody got internet. So this bar, I think it overtook English. And in the coming years, it's going to go exponentially this way. But the thing is, all these languages, they're heavily supported. They have a lot of research, tools, and every kind of, you know, a lot of people working on this. But this part right here, it doesn't okay it doesn't have a lot of people it doesn't have a lot of research it doesn't have tools it doesn't have many things so this part that it's a lot of people it's billions of people okay who use these languages who prefer these languages over english so we'll we'll here we'll discuss how to you know get into these languages and take it on par with uh, languages like english so we'll discuss what kind of tools and what kind of research can be done in this languages to take it on par with this. So, uh, before going to that, we have to discuss what are resource rich languages. And we just saw English and uh, a few more languages. And you could call them as resource rich because uh, there's a lot of tools, research, corpus, everything for these resource rich languages. But there are a lot of 95% of the languages, they're resource poor languages. And just in India, this is the amount of people who speak this, you know, so-called resource poor languages. And the problem is that there's no, you know, solid foundation for developing tools or all this stuff. So you, if, if you're a developer or a machine learning engineer who wants to build these tools for these languages, there's a lot of potential for these tools but you don't have a solid foundation to build these tools upon. So, I'm just talking about India and I'm pretty sure you can, you know, apply this to any other languages. And, you know, currently there are 234 million uh, English, uh, Indian language users who prefer Indian languages over English. And uh, it's going to increase, okay? That's obvious. Like, if you look at the last point, nine out of the 10 internet users between 2016 and 2021 20, uh, will prefer in, uh, you know their own native languages over English so if there are there's not a lot of people working on this they'll have to switch to English and if you think about it that's an inconvenience isn't it like if I speak English and I'm good in English then I would definitely like my tools to be in English or Chinese or whatever language I'm used to it so wh what do those people do see they can't do anything unless they're developers so that's why I wanted to t uh, you know do this talk. Okay, so how to you know take these poor languages and give them a solid foundation of resources, research, corpus, and tools. Okay. So all the languages can be classified based on their resources. Okay, we have English, everything 
all the tools first come for English. Like if you think about Google now, it was released for English first, and then you can currently use uh, you know Google now in I think Spanish, French, Danish, and uh, you know few languages like that. And we have next ten languages, and then we have all the Indian languages and some popular languages in Africa. I think uh, Southeast Asia and a few languages and also Japanese uh, you know falls into the top 10 languages after English okay so our goal should be to take the level 4 languages to level 3 okay that itself is a huge humongous task okay and it takes a lot of research and like I said it takes a lot of time to uh, you know developing time everything so this is not something a person alone can do but it's something a person alone can you know start okay it's, it's, you can start a revolution to propel these languages from level 4 to level 3 okay let's see how and uh, how many of you here have used grammarly okay that that's good enough reason so i'm pretty sure if it wasn't for grammarly i wouldn't have been here it's such an amazing tool it corrects your grammar okay so if uh, a commercial company wanted to come uh, you know uh, develop a uh, application like Grammarly for you know some other language suppose they wanted to develop it for Hindi which has uh, as we saw 422 million users so I'm pretty sure even if 0.1% of the people decided on using it it would be like about 400,000 people so that enough is huge potential for you know uh, a startup to develop that but they can't why because there's no not enough resource there's not enough tools there's not enough there's nothing basically here there's not a lot of people working on it so they can't they have to start from the scratch which is a lot of work so now we'll discuss about how we can give such commercial companies or startups proper foundation so it starts with the corpus so what is a corpus okay so here we see a sentence okay corpus is basically a fancy word for data okay textual data so here uh, we can see that i hope this show the server working he opened the window it's two random sentences so this is a morphological uh, corpus what it means is that i is a pronoun hope is i think uh, yeah uh, you can see that it's it tagged the uh, parts of speech window here is a noun okay so this gives you know you can understand you know here window is an object but how do you make the machines understand here window is an object okay i'll give you an example okay so i fish a fish okay so here we know that this fish is a noun okay this is a action this is a verb so you know i'm going into a pond i'm fishing for the fish here fishing is an action and this fish uh, it's a thing it's a noun okay so suppose i wanted to convert this into french okay so what do i do so the french i don't I'm, i don't remember the french translation so i'll write it down I'm sorry for you know offending any French speakers here. So it's completely different. These two words are the same, okay? But je pêche en poison. So how do you say that this is a verb and this is a noun? So that's why a tag corpus is important. So it tells the machine that this is an action word, this is a thing. So you know it makes everything easier, even from uh, you know developing text to speech translation everything it needs a corpus so the start of developing any commercial tool is having a solid data corpus textual tag data so for doing this so uh, not a few lines won't do anything it needs thousands maybe hundred thousands maybe a million lines so that's where a POS tagger comes in okay the POS tagger is like the foundation of doing any uh, natural language processing task we'll see how okay these are a few applications of a POS tagger 
See, uh, so right now we look at it, you know, this, the oh, sorry. Okay, this is a tool that I made for Malayalam language. So we'll, so here I'm giving, okay, this is a random sentence. Okay, I, I don't know what it means, I can't read it. So uh, I, I developed this tool. I, I don't need to know the language to develop this tool. So that's that's the best thing. Okay, you don't need to know the language. You just need to have the corpus, proper corpus. Okay, corpus means data. So right now I entered the text. Okay, so this tagger was trained on, uh, a, you know, a da uh, you know, a data already pre-trained data. So uh, you know, as we saw on the previous slides, it's tagged. Okay, we trained it on a tagged corpus. So right now we'll see what happens. Uh, what a PO tagger does. Okay. Okay, right now we got a tag sentence. Okay, we can see this is a noun, noun, verb, verb. So this is what a PO tagger does. Okay, it's here. So these are the few application of having a proper PO tagger. Okay, so the foundation, this is how we build this foundation for a language, okay, having a good corpus. So it helps in classifying, clustering data, extracting topics, and every other next level of tools you have to build. So why is having all these bad? Okay, so why is having, you know, not having research corpus tools bad? So this is one of the reasons, okay, commercial organization, they do not have okay uh, the motivation to build these build these tools so you know having this helps boost the economy okay so Supp suppose if i i mentioned that uh, example of grammarly okay they create they were able to create a tool because it already had a lot of research and uh, resources in that field so if languages doesn't have this you no know, commercial organization you know, developers can't think of ideas because they just uh, start from the scratch so that's why we need all these tools for you know even this boosts the economy okay language support by commercial organization basically boosts the economy okay so uh, okay uh, elsnet was an organization uh, based on i think norway okay so they proposed a concept called black okay so what black black stands for is basic language resource kit so what their uh, motivation or what its uh, you know core idea was that if you have a set of ideals for you know processing a language that is uh, you know you have a roadmap you have ev whatever language you're doing stuff in okay first you need to start with the corpus then you move on to a pure tagger and then so basically what this revolved around was having an organization for you know taking in a language if you do one uh, you know if you manage to make one language to go, uh, make make it you know move on to the next level of uh, resources and support you can do the same for the other languages okay so you can uh, you know apply the same set of ideologies for multiple languages so this uh, revolves around having an organization okay for doing this so basically uh, it was abandoned in 2003 and un unfortunately this was proposed for European Union uh, languages but it can be applied for the whole world and uh, they left it I don't know why and I have tried pre pinging them but I didn't get a response so basically they abandoned it so what will happen in the future if we don't do this okay what will there's a lot of languages out there so what will happen if we don't provide support resources tools to these languages so there are three outcomes okay so it depends upon what you you know what your philosophy is if you are uh, happy with having you know a few languages which are fully developed or in 50 years from now there may be only three languages like english chinese or and russian okay if you're okay with it then it's okay you know and like all these two out of all these three the last one might be you know the most promising one because you know language and speak uh, will uh, you know be used to ensure participants participation from all the uh, all around the world okay so 
you know if i could choose between these three i would choose the third one okay because uh, not because my my language is one of the resource poor languages but it will be helpful for the whole people for the for the whole world okay okay so this was what we talked about a basic language resource kit okay minimal se set of language resources that is necessary to do any pre comity research and education at all okay so the uh, the commercial organization are built on these resources research and tools so so this was some of the applications of blog okay it starts with the corpora which is basically data textual data tag data all these are datas and collections then we have taggers tools text to speech okay these two application they have to be built on proper written and spoken language corpora so for suppose if you wanted to uh, develop google now for hindi you would have to have a wonderful spoken uh, spoken and lang uh, you know written language uh, so here google is you know in front because they already have a lot of you know data so but other languages they are not so lucky so the uh, if you wanted to develop some tools uh, this the you could start with this okay first we have a po tagger lemma extractor all this uh, we'll look at some of these applications after this and uh, okay named entity recognition okay what it does is uh, everybody listens to uh, you know uh, you know uh, everyone uses netflix yeah yeah probably uh, so and everyone uh, listens to the news and reads the news so when you go into the news site okay so it's grouped according to you know uh, world news regional news sports news so when you have thousands and thousands of articles per day how do you you know group this you can't it's it's manually not possible it needs a huge amount of human resource so that's why we need a named entity recognition software okay so what it does is okay if it detects a person you know it knows wha what's the name what's the location what's the context about so that we we can get help in you know uh, grouping these okay into similar topics and it's hugely useful tool for a, no matter what the language but it's a very important and uh, you know core tool for resources in any language so that's what a named entity recognition does it basically identify the things in text okay location organization person so it groups it helps you know uh, websites and uh, what do you call yeah websites group it according to the context okay so if we take the example of netflix recommendation systems uh, can work wonders for a media company so if you develop a named entity recognition software for any of the language you know maybe private organization would uh, you know uh, approach you uh, you know try to buy it from you or even support you because it's a uh, it's an amazing tool okay so these are a few end user tools you could build so as i said you need to have a corp a lot of research so that's what we covered in the first part okay for building these tools okay these are the end user tools so we we'll look at the co corfront solution okay so this is a popular meme about natural language processing so what's a co what a co co you know corfront's resolution does is that here we are talking about natural language processing okay the next line okay the machine doesn't know what we are talking about okay what what do we want i mean when do we want it when do we want what because it doesn't know we were talking about the natural language processing a few sentences back so that's what corfront's resolution does it remembers topics okay so uh, where are we now now so we are on level 1 we don't have anything and it takes a lot of research and a lot of manpower but if one person was you know going in front to start all this they have a lot of potential it's a uh, it's a uh, you know very clean playing space because there are no fast movers at all so if you are interested you could try to start because a lot of organization would be happy to provide you funding for all the you know doing such things but there's nobody going into this so 
uh, I think I'm gonna wrap up my talk and these are my uh, this is the project that I showed you earlier this is my Twitter this is my email so if you have any questions or if you want to you know take it forward or something you could always ping me up thank you so uh, does anyone have any questions yeah sure uh, so I'm wondering, I don't know so much about NLP. I advise in AI for seven years now, but my question is a lot of your methodology in NLP is very inductive. Very? Inductive. Yeah. Induction based. Meaning you have a data, you train on the data, you classify what you just said. You classify data. This is like AI from 20 centuries hard. It's not that modern. Yeah. So question is, is there any other way of building NLP systems, whether that's uh, grammar check or something that's not just induction based because induction always implies you have to have a lot of data and in languages like French or whatever it, languages are very different I mean I'm sure you know some of the history of language evolution right they are very very different inductive methods are linear and incremental hence the reason Google translate even until now try to translate something to Mandarin and it's a disaster <laughs> Right, despite the fact that it's Google, because they use, I'm not actually sure what they use, but if they use this, that, that can easily explain why they don't do anywhere with actual, like not very similar languages, but say English or German. So question is, is there anything that's not just doing induction based, this kind of data classifier, you know, uh, separator, whatever approach, but something more deduction, translation. There's like a lot of AI that can help. Question but uh, the thing is, there's not a lot of people working on this field. So, uh, like, unless developers, you know, f uh, you know, uh, who knows this modern methodologies work on this, then uh, only then, you know, we'll know about, you know, what there is, what there is not, what we can use, what we cannot use. So, uh, I try to think no one has any idea because no one has ever tried to apply any apply anything to this field. So. One thing that I could do was I could, you know, as you mentioned, I did the 20th century method using induction because uh, one person already did it for, a, 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 you know, Tamil language. So I took that and I applied it on Malayalam language because I didn't have any other resources or tools, and it worked, kind of worked. But I give you an example. A few weeks ago, there was a so there's something called generative adversarial networks. That yeah, GANs. Um, so there was a project I forgot the name, but you give ten words that project, that platform, generates to, for you a video, not a text to speech, even a video, that looks credible enough for you to think that humans actually generate. So you give it 10 words, cat, platform, false Asia, girl, fish, and it generates a video that's like that. So to me, so GAS, a lot of self-play stuff, a lot of deep, uh, deep uh, reinforcement learning type of methodologies could be potentially used for this. because. All of them, what they have in common, they don't require any data. They are very context specific. A lot of them are deductive. A lot of them play. Instead of a, ne a network or AI methodology training on data, you have networks training on networks. So that spares you the time and everything, and you don't need the data. Because if you train on one data, you try to extrapolate on another data. Usually, languages are dramatically different. In, I mean, they're similar languages, obviously. But when you try to do some dramatic type of uh, processing, it's very, very difficult. And the context part is the biggest missing part, right, for NLP, because they don't understand. Yeah. Like you said, fish, fish, and then there is passion and blossom, right? So how does it know which one is a subject, which one is a noun, unless it knows exactly the context of English language, right? So, yeah, for me, you have to probably look at the more advanced AI yeah. and not induction based AI. So uh, that's actually my, you know, next part in this. I just started, like, uh, six months ago, this project, and uh, I did a few, you know, or ancient methods. So I'll probably move on to, you know, in the next six months, move on to uh, GANs and, you know, trying new new things with this. So maybe, maybe check because there is already progress related to languages. It's not NLP, probably. I mean, I don't know, but the fact that they generate video from words, random words, that should probably be a good direction. Yeah. yeah thank you. I'll, I will. That's it. So I'll. Sure, and have a nice day. <laughs>